So after my Sonic Generations X Shadow video, whatever you want to call that game, I got a lot of people in the comment section and basically that turned into a big controversy. Uh, there were a lot of people who did actually, you know, come to that video and actually did respect my opinion, but there was a lot of other people that did disagree. And, you know, this really got me, you know, like very interested and invested in the topic of Sonic Generations versus Sonic Unleashed. And why I personally feel like Sonic Unleashed is a very important uh, remaster slash port that really just needs to happen. I've been sitting on this for a couple of days now, and in all honesty, uh, it's something I've just been kind of analyzing. I had to do my own research in terms of why Sonic Unleashed has not got remastered. And, you know, just trying to make you guys, I hope you guys understand like why Sonic Unleashed being remastered is so important. So I'm gonna explain to you guys why. Now, let me just start the conversation by saying that I played this game all the way back when it first came out. Back when I was about eight years old, I had a PlayStation 2 and I went to Walmart one day and I bought Sonic Unleashed. I don't remember exactly how that happened, but I remember looking at like trailers for the game before the game actually came out. And for some reason, there was a Sonic Unleashed website that I swear to you, I felt like I was the only person who actually knew about the website. Um, but I'm pretty sure there was a lot of other people who knew about the website. It was on the official Sega website. People probably don't even really know about this because no one talks about the website. But it was my main gateway into Sonic Unleashed. And I remember looking at the gameplay and of course, I was actually seeing the HD version of the game. For those who don't know, Sonic Unleashed has two different versions the game they have the standard definition version which is the Wii slash PlayStation 2 versions and the HD versions which were released for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 now on the trailers for that website you know for the game I saw Sonic Unleashed the HD version but of course you know when I got the PlayStation 2 version when I eventually got it you know I automatically was like okay with it because I didn't see there the, like I knew there was like a difference but I think that I thought at the time like my mentality was that oh some games just look really good like in trailers and stuff like that as opposed to the actual thing not knowing that that's pretty much uh fraud or whatever that's like false advertising if that was actually the case like if you bought a game that you saw like on a commercial and just look completely different when you actually bought it which there probably is real life examples of that but it's not that's not the video for this Long story short though, I played Sonic Unleashed on the PlayStation 2 when I was eight years old. It, I actually took about, uh, until I was like 10 years old to actually beat it. So I took about a year and a half just to beat that game because uh, back in the day, I, I didn't know how to play games that well, but I was able to beat that game eventually. And needless to say, I had an amazing time with Sonic Unleashed. It's one of my favorite Sonic games. While I do have my problems with it, it's still very significant to me because when I played it, I was only about a year into being a Sonic fan. Now, fast forward to about 2009. Uh, I don't know what happened. One day, I think I was in elementary school at the time, of course. I definitely was in elementary school. I don't know why I just said I think. <laughs> but I was in elementary school at the time, and they had uh, this media center at the, the school. And in the media center, they also had, like, a gaming section where they had, like, you know, uh, cheat code books and stuff like that. One such of these books, which I might have an image of that on the screen, I'm not even sure, one of the actual uh, books had cheat codes, you know, of course, for like, not like fake cheat codes, like how like GameFAQs basically tells you how to like unlock stuff. I'm talking about real cheat codes, like from like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, like how to like fly a car or something like that when you're just driving. And you know, that had a lot of codes like that, but it still did have like GameFAQs codes. Okay, so apparently uh, that cheat code book that I actually had on the screen just now, that is literally the cheat code book I actually owned for the longest time. I don't know what really actually happened to it. Uh, but that cheat code book actually does not have Sonic Unleashed in it. I thought it did. I just re retrospectively speaking, I, I thought it did, but uh, apparently it didn't. Uh, there was another cheat code book that I promised to God did have Sonic Unleashed in it. I just didn't know. Uh, but, you know, there is a cheat code codebook out there that probably does have Sonic Unleashed in it. Uh, if I do actually find it, I'll probably put it in the conversation down below uh, if I do find it and I do find out the title of it. But I remember seeing, like, skipping straight to the Sonic section, I remember seeing Sonic Unleashed for the Xbox 360. I was like, oh, okay, it's Xbox 360. I don't have that console. And I remember seeing stuff about Tornado, the flying defense section. And I was like, wait a minute. 
There's no tornado defense thing in the uh, the, the PlayStation 2 version. There's no PlayStation. There's no uh, tornado stuff in Sonic Unleashed. Because if you've ever played the Unleashed, as the fans call it, version of the game, you will know that there is no tornado flying sections. That's only in the HD versions of the game. And that's when I figured out that there was apparently two different versions of Sonic Unleashed. One that looked uh, good, and there was one that just looked all around better. So, of course, I asked for Xbox 360 for that Christmas just to get Sonic Unleashed. I literally had no reason to get Xbox 360 except that, and I didn't get it. But I did get an Xbox 360 after that. I didn't get a 2009 Christmas, but I did get one in 2010 Christmas. And, of course, that was when I experienced Sonic Unleashed on the Xbox 360. And, you know, that was an amazing time in of itself. I had a lot of memories with, memories with that version of the game as well. Uh, I didn't get the, I don't have the Xbox 360 version, but yes, I do have the PlayStation 3 version. Which, yes, I means I have owned every single version of this game. Uh, minus the mobile version, which, who cares about that? But I literally have every single version of this game. Right now, I don't have the Xbox 360 version. But this is like my dedication, okay? I personally think that there are fundamental flaws with Sonic Unleashed. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the word. I do have loads of problems with it. But even with Sonic Unleashed's problems and all of the criticisms I've got, because again, this game was released in the dark age of Sonic, the quote unquote dark age, because I don't really get it. But in this dark age, this game was released and it was one of the main like torches in the, in the, in the quote unquote darkness at the time for Sonic the Hedgehog. And this started a whole lot of things. This is the reason why Generations even exist in the first place. This is the only reason why maybe Sonic really got, you know, back on his feet again. Some people say colors, but I think this is definitely where the game, where that whole entire thing started, uh, like, actually. Now, over the years, uh, my Xbox 360, I guess, I don't know what happened to it. I think, I'm pretty sure I sold it, but I don't know why I sold it. Um, and then eventually I got the PlayStation 3 version uh, because I got a PlayStation 3, but I eventually sold that as well. Now, with that being in mind, you might be asking, oh, well, if I want to experience Sonic Unleashed nowadays, what do I have to do? For the PlayStation 2 slash, you know, Wii versions of the game, you can definitely buy these still. And if you have a Wii U, you can definitely play the Wii version on your Wii U. Although the PlayStation 2 version, you actually can't play this anywhere unless you get a PlayStation 2 copy of the game. And if you want to emulate it, which, you know, you do what you do. If you want to emulate these versions of the game, then they are 100% playable. You can play these games from front to back, from side to side to back. You know what I'm saying? Any way that you want to play these games is completely fine. Both versions of these games run silky smooth on any emulator that you're probably trying to play, as long as the emulator is actually good in the first place. Uh, you know, like Dolphin or PCSX, PCSX2. I always get that mixed up, but <laughs> but yes, emulating these versions of the game is basically like little to none. In fact, I even actually am able to play this game on my freaking Steam Deck, and I'm able to actually have 60 FPS for Sonic Unleashed on the Wii which I think is probably the best way that you can play this uh, Wii version of the game right now. So whereas there's really no problem there with in terms of trying to preserve that version of the game. But as for the Xbox 360 plus PlayStation 3 version of the game, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. Now, as you guys should probably already know if you've been watching this video, if you clicked on this video, you already know this, Sonic Unleashed has never gotten an actual remaster, port, or anything of the sort. Now, I say that, but at the same time, the Xbox One uh, and the Xbox Series S and X do have uh, backwards compatibility for the Xbox 360 version of Sonic Unleashed. But, you know, and of course, they do up res it. You can actually, you know, like unlock like 60 FPS. And, you know, I guess the game can look better, I guess, if you have a 4K television and stuff like that. But the point of the matter is, what about those people who don't have an Xbox 360? What about the PlayStation 3 crowd or the PlayStation crowd in general? Well, I'm sorry, but you're basically out of luck. For one thing, the PlayStation 2 version of Sonic Unleashed was never released on any type of, you know, digital storefront like the PS2 Classics or whatever. And the PlayStation 3 version, while you could actually play this via PlayStation Now about a year ago or something like that, or, you know, previous before that, about a year ago, all the Sonic games were, were actually removed from the PS Now thing, uh, you know, service. So now you can't play this version of the game anymore. You can't play the PlayStation 3 version anymore.
Now, you might be saying, oh, wait, what about the PC version? Again, if you're watching this video, you should already know this is a this is a red herring. There is no PC version of Sonic Unleashed. The only way that you can actually play Sonic Unleashed now, again, is if you have the Xbox 360 version of the game and you can play it on there or you can backwards compatible, you can use the backwards compatibility with the Xbox One or Xbox Series S or X, which not everyone has. I don't have an Xbox. I don't plan on getting an Xbox anytime soon because of reasons. And you can buy the game on the Xbox marketplace if you don't actually have the disc version of the game. But the PlayStation crowd and the PC crowd for people who probably just primarily play on PC, um, you know, they've probably never actually even experienced Sonic Unleashed. There's lots of people who have never played Sonic Unleashed, which is really amazing to say because it is actually one of the you know highest selling Sonic games of all time. The game preservation is like for Sonic Unleashed is absolutely abysmal. There's not a lot going on with it. And this is the reason why I wanted to make this video because people don't really understand like how important a port of Sonic Unleashed is. I was one of those people that used to not really care about Sonic Unleashed being ported, but that was when I still had my Xbox 360 and my PlayStation 3, especially my PlayStation 3. And you know, I could play stuff like the Unleashed Project. Now, what you could do is if you're on PC, you could play the daytime levels of Sonic Unleashed and you know, just in Sonic Generations as a mod. In fact, I actually experienced the same thing with Grand Theft Auto 4, although on a lesser scale, because Grand Theft Auto 4 is on PC. But as everybody knows, the GTA 4 port is actually pretty much just just bad. And yeah, I don't think it's really that bad, but a lot of people do say it's a really bad port. And while I think it is a compa backwards compatible on the Xbox, there has been no re-release or remaster for that game either. And that's my favorite Grand Theft Auto game. So of course, what the heck? This is really just the whole entire, the whole entire conversation of this is really just going and just asking on why isn't game preservation, why isn't it more enforced? You know, the, you gotta understand the most uh, highest, um, you know, selling, bus selling like entertainment product of all time is Grand Theft Auto V. Grand Theft Auto V has beat out books, movies, TV, all that stuff. It has made more money than all of that stuff. And that is absolutely insane to me. So gaming is very important. There's no more of that. Gaming is, is just for like nerds or any of that stuff. Gaming is a legit business now. It's been a business for years. So of course, why isn't Sonic Unleashed on PC? And mind you, if Sonic Unleashed was on PC, it would be amazing. The things that we could do with it are amazing. But since it's not, there's no mods, no upscaling, no 60 FPS, no preservation. It's not like it's insane to me now in terms of why it's not been ported Sega or Sonic team has never actually directly stated on like why Sonic Unleashed has never been ported It has never been directly stated. Uh, they might have like thrown some things around here and there, but I'm pretty sure they've never given a solid consensus on why it's not. But I'm going to give you guys basically my reasons why I feel like they have not ported Sonic Unleashed. And this is because this is coming from like, you know, like a lot of research, like over the re over the years, going to forums and literally looking at what Sega said about it themselves. And this is basically what I'm saying. The first reason is this is a really big one because this one is thrown around in a whole lot of comment sections and a lot of forums and stuff like that. People think, or like, this is another thing. They think that they lost the source code for the game. Now, if you don't know what source code is, basically source code is basically, I would say the heart and the brain of a game. If you have the source code of a game, you basically can control basically anything with it. It's basically your game to mess with, I guess, in a way. Uh, because basically, and this reason why if someone is to were to leak the source code of a game, like how some source code has been like leaked in the past uh, recently, uh, then it is damning on the game developers themselves if they're, you know, it's before the game has been released and all the other stuff. Now, after, you know, years after, like how, you know, source code has been decompiled, it doesn't really matter. But the point of the matter is, is that some people actually theorize that they actually lost the source code to this game. Now, there really is no definitive, like actual evidence of this, that Sonic, you know, Sonic Team's actually lost the source code. Cause you have to remember, you know, the, like the thing about it is, I don't really think losing the source code is a real big reason why they actually probably don't port the game. 
uh, mainly because of the fact that uh, for one thing, emulation exists, you know, and of course with emulation, you can still like up res and you can still like tinker around with like the set, the, the FPS and all that stuff. So it's not like emulation wouldn't be like a bad thing. And of course, Sega still, you know, they, they provided Xbox or Microsoft with the game files to actually have it still on the Xbox micro marketplace so you can still download it and all that stuff. And it's not like reverse engineering. I don't even know if they really want to do that, but I think reverse engineering would probably be like maybe easier for them. I'm not a, a, like an expert on that type of stuff, but I do think that the whole source code idea is just kind of fallacy. I would actually have to like point out that like for one thing, I don't think the source code thing is really that big of a deal because you know, you got games like Sonic the Hedgehog 3, which, you know, Sonic 3 hasn't been released that many times in recent years. It's only recently got re-released on with Origins. With Origins, they had to like remove like the Michael Jackson music. So, and on that note, another reason why Sonic Unleashed has not been ported, another theory, is because of licensing. Um, they're the first track in the game and well, not the first track, I guess, but the main theme of the game, Endless Possibilities, the main singer of that song might actually have some copyright uh, stuff going on with that game that Sega probably doesn't want to deal with, which does seem extremely likely if that really is the case. I think this might be the most likely out of all of them, honestly, I'm uh, just going to jump the gun here. But, um, you know, in all honesty, I do think that might be it because of the fact that uh, Endless Possibilities was not like sung by like Crush 40 or anything like that, but it was, you know, sung by, you know, uh, Jared something, Bowling for Soup, somebody in Bowling for Soup or something like that. You know, the same guys who I think did the Phineas and Ferb theme song, if you've ever watched the Disney Channel back in the day. And like I said, with Sonic the Hedgehog 3, because of the fact that they actually had to remove the Michael Jackson songs, which are an integral part of the game, mind you, they didn't want to re-release Sonic 3 until that actually happened. So the same thing might apply to the main theme of Sonic Unleashed, Endless Possibilities. And I say this because of the fact that while Endless Possibilities was originally on the Planetary Pieces soundtrack, which is the official soundtrack album for Sonic Unleashed, it was originally on there. But on October 13th of 2012, Sega actually did make the soundtracks actually available in three different, uh, basically, volumes um, on digital storefronts and streaming services. But the song Endless Possibility has been noticeably omitted which is very weird, which honestly it sounds like, you know, they had some licensing going on. They could only use that song for, you know, re-releases and stuff for a limited uh, amount of time. So in all honesty, I think that might be the biggest reason. Now, another reason why they might not be able to port Sonic Unleashed to anything is because of the reception that the game actually got. If you guys don't know, the game at first, when it first came out, got a huge negative response. Some people even said that it was worse than Sonic 06. And those people probably did smoke a, a little bit of crack back in the day. But the point of the matter is, is that, you know, Sonic Unleashed really didn't get a whole lot of good reception. In fact, the Metacritic score from critics, from game critics, their professional position of being a game critic, it got a 60 on Megacritic. Now for user scores is 8.5, but for some reason, it seems like Sega doesn't really look at like user scores because user scores are usually higher. But then again, you know, and there might be a reason why Sega doesn't listen to like the fans, but it also is a problem when Sega doesn't listen to the fans because they do it like all of the time because it looks like they look, it's like, it seems like they always look at like, the uh, you know the game critics and stuff like that and always the score and not like you know if the game is fun or not to like fans and whatever the game was trashed by a lot of people and sega might be afraid of having that backlash resurface again the other matter is is which another theory i've actually seen running around is if they release it on something like steam which has a very robust review system it could get a lot of negative feedback on the game and basically make it so that you know the um, user score would basically have it be like mixed or negative and that would further tarnish like sonic's reputation and of course that's not really good for him right now because of the fact that the quote unquote dark age apparently tarnished Sonic's reputation so much that at one point, if you guys remember, I think it was like 2014 or something like that, they decided to delist all Sonic games or like dark age Sonic games or Sonic games that are not of quality from like game stores and all that stuff, which is the reason why when they re-added Sonic 06 back to the marketplace and like I think a Sonic Unleashed as well, it was, it came as a shock 
because Sega was like trying to, at that time, trying to really just sweep Sonic's past misdeeds, quote unquote, under the rug. I don't think Sonic's Dark Age was really that bad, like at all. I think calling it the Dark Age of Sonic is really stretching it. I've always thought that, but that is, you know, definitely what Sega is, you know, thinking with that situation. Finally, the last reason is they could just be lazy. Like, let's just be honest here. They could just straight up be lazy. They could just be lazy and just not want to do it because of the fact that they, you know, they got other things on their plate and other things on their mind. Or again, they just don't want to do it because they just don't feel like doing it. And that might be also one of the biggest reasons why, because, you know, there's a lot of, re there's a lot of things that Sega Sonic Team does that like, you know, fan or not, you can't really deny that sometimes Sega really does make some really messed up and weird and absolutely bogus decisions. Sonic Unleashed means a lot to Sonic fans. You know, like I said before, Sonic Unleashed is not a perfect game, but is a game that I just straight up love and I feel like everyone should play, you know? Whether or not you love the game, you know, whether or not you think there's problems with the game, it doesn't really matter. Sonic Unleashed is truly one of the greatest Sonic games of all time. Mind you, this game is still the most highest production, most highest soul given, Sonic game of all time. This game still looks better than Sonic Frontiers, and I'm not a person who just like raves about graphics or whatever and stuff like that, but I can't deny that Sonic Unleashed still stands the test of the time. And this game was released 16 years ago. 16 years ago. Freaking Sonic Unleashed can drive at the, like towards the end of this year. It can freaking drive. I was eight when this game came out. That is, I'm 23 now. So just understand that this game has still to still like stood the test of time. And it really was just like pushing the hardware to like its limits. Because of all, we all know that Sonic and Leaks on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 used to have, you know, PlayStation 3 had variable frame rate. Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 version had like stuttering and like, you know, of course, you know, the load times. The load times really not bad, but like, you know, they could have been better, you know, like 10, 10, 15 seconds, you know, that's not bad, but like, I mean, it's way better than like 20 or 30 seconds for Sonic 06, but like at the end of the day, you know, the Sonic Unleashed was ahead of its time and it stood, it still stood, stands the test of time. And it's sad to see that that game still is like on inferior hardware and that not a lot of Sonic fans can experience it. There should always be a way for like Sonic to be experienced on anything. You know, this is the reason why I feel like a lot of Sonic games should be brought to like different consoles. Make a Sonic, like take a note from Mario, bring like a, a Sonic 3D All-Stars thing in the game. Like, you know, have a lot of uh, past Sonic games. You know, like I've said before, have Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, but everybody knows and can play that. But think about like Sonic Heroes, Think of, even think about Sonic 06. I would even say that, think about Sonic 06. Think about Sonic Unleashed, think about Sonic Colors. But of course we did get a remaster of Sonic Colors, but that was trash, but we're not gonna get into that. The point of the matter is, is that Sonic Unleashed is very, very important as a game. And for game preservation, it, this is just absolutely stupid. You've got one of the most amazing technological advancements of a game in like in gaming. And again, cause like no one really did a whole lot of what Sonic Unleashed did at the time. You know, I would compare it to the, to the physics engine for GTA 4. There have been so many people trying to replicate the physics of GTA 4, but it really just can't be done because the hardware was not powerful enough. And to this day, even if you did, you could run GTA 4, which also might be a reason why not, it's not remastered or ported, is because it would actually take a lot of processing power that we might still not even have, but PCs definitely do. But the point of the matter is, it's a really technologically robust game. Sonic Unleashed was the same way. And it's the reason why, like I said in my video, I'm not really excited for Sonic Generations because we already have that game. That game has been preserved in some way, shape, or form. Yes, it's not on the PlayStation 4 or the, play or the Xbox One, but you can still at least play it on PC if you do have one. And as coming from a guy who primarily just plays on PC nowadays, it does it doesn't really do much. You know, the whole thing about it having mods and shadow and stuff like that, you know, it doesn't really make a difference to me. And yeah, I know shadow might get like a news story and stuff like that. And people might be saying like, I jumped the gun, but like at the end of the day, I see what I need to be seeing. And at the end of the day, I can't really trust Sega for, you know, stuff like that. Generations 
um, is definitely a game that I feel like they should have did this for earlier. They should have been done this already. And the fact that we had to wait for a long time for the game to be re released is absolutely stupid to me. But if they did this for Sonic Unleashed, one of the most amazing Sonic games of all time and a game that definitely needs it, well, I would definitely be having a more positive attitude about this in the first place. But since they're not, I'm going to be disappointed with it. And it's not like I can't be disappointed. Apparently, people say you can't be disappointed about stuff uh, when it comes to Sonic now. And I think that's just absolutely stupid, but whatever. Look, all I'm saying is, is that Sonic Leash deserves a lot better. Again, I grew up with this game. And like I said, it does have fundamental problems. But at the end of the day, Sonic Unleashed is such an amazing and great game that holds so many memories with me that I would hope that a lot of people would also be able to experience or have already experienced. And I'm not looking for another Chaos X situation where, you know, they're gonna just, some fan is gonna just make the game themselves. The fact that, that Sonic fans even have to do that, you know, Sonic 06, like cleaning up their mess. Like, why do we have to do that? Why can't, why can't Sega do that, you know? And besides, you know, I'm not even gonna get into a lot of that because even if a, a fan, you know, is trying to like, I guess, remake Sonic Unleashed, do you know what that person could be doing better with their time? At least I personally feel they could be making their own game. They could be making the, the next best, um, you know, taking a note from Sonic Unleashed. They could make the next best game franchise or whatever, you know, and that's just sad to say. You know, and, and I, I hope to God that maybe Sega or someone or anybody will finally see this video and finally understand how Sonic Unleashed, how much it means to us. The point of the matter is, guys, Sonic Unleashed Remaster needs to happen. Whether or not Sega sees this or whatever, and whether or not I make a petition for this remains to be seen. But at least I want you guys to know if, if at least one or two people come from this video and actually understand vividly why this is important to me, or not just me, but Sonic fans and everybody else alike, then I feel like we should all understand that we need to get Sonic Unleashed another chance. Seriously, don't let this game die. This is a beautiful masterpiece, even though, again, I have problems with it. But that's just what happens when you love something. You work through those problems. But with that being said, guys, again, this video has been a long time coming. I thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you understand more why Sonic Unleashed needs to be ported slash remastered. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, like this video. And if you guys like you saw and you want to see more, why not subscribe to the channel? All my social medias will be in the link in the description down below. But with that being said, guys, thank y'all for watching. Have a good night or day whenever you're watching this. And as always, hasta.